Hello, I'm Ann Osborne. I'm going to show you a case of an eight-year-old male who was brought to the emergency room by his parents because he'd been complaining of headache and then was starting to throw up. A quick examination showed signs of increased intracranial pressure and so an emergency CT scan was ordered. Let's take a look at two representative images. There is a mixed density mass, a very complicated one, with imaging appearance with suggestions of fat and calcification and some soft tissue in the region of the pineal gland at the back of the third ventricle. And it's causing obstructive hydrocephalus. Well, what is this thing? Well, an MR scan was ordered. And here are some representative images. We see that this complex appearing mass has areas of short T1 in it, as well as calcification. Definitely some cysts. With the flare scan, we can see the obstructive hydrocephalus and the periventricular accumulation of interstitial fluid, cysts, and some moderate enhancement of the mass. More information, but we're still left with wondering what this is. What can you do? Well, you can fire up StatDX. Here's the opening page of StatDX. Pineal gland mass. Right at the top of our list is a differential diagnosis, a DDX, for pineal gland mass. So let's click on that and have a look. Just what I need. So did it look like a uncomplicated pineal cyst? No. Did it look like a germinoma? Hmm, not really. What about a pineal cytoma? No, I don't think so. Let's look at teratoma. And here's a graphic design of a teratoma. This starts to look a lot like what it is that we were looking at. But what I might want to see is our case spectrum. And we've got eight cases. The first one, the most common appearance, is the one that's right on the top. And here we see two images. That looks very much like what we were looking at. And here's another one. Looks very much like what we're looking at. So now I think that it's likely, comparing these differential diagnoses, that what we're looking at is a pineal teratoma. Could we be sure? Is there anything else we can do? Yes, there's another online tool available that has a lot of clinical and pathology information that complements what we see on StatVX, and that's clinical key. I'm going to begin typing in pineal, and now we begin to see pineal gland and pineal tumor. Here's what I want. Neoplasms with a pineal gland published just in 2013, so I'm going to click on that. And this is really nice. Now I see an outline of what's there on the left. I think that this is going to fall into the category of a teratoma. Whoa, this is really cool. First image under teratoma is a surgical specimen that's been removed of a benign teratoma. We see it's a lobulated, well-delineated mass. Looks just like ours. It's got fat in it. Hmm, ours did too. It's got cysts. It's got some solid portions. And this is almost surely now a benign teratoma. By putting together the imaging differential diagnosis and coming up with our most likely diagnosis based on the imaging studies and putting the clinical and pathologic information together from clinical key and finding exactly what it is that we think we're looking for, we can tell the neurosurgeons that we are almost surely dealing with a benign mature teratoma that further imaging of the neuraxis isn't necessary. And we know, and now they know, what they will likely find when they go in and take out the tumor. Better for us, better for the neurosurgeons, and certainly much better, more efficient, and more accurate diagnosis for the patient and patient care. Thank you.